This short video tutorial is about MHRA referencing style <clears throat> and this is the referencing style which is used in um, arts and humanities departments across the UK and different um, countries uh, especially uh, students who are doing research. Um, during my PhD in Shakespeare I uh, had to use this one because that was the requirement of my university um, and obviously I um, researched MHRA guidance um, a lot and it took me some time uh, and then because I have been through this process so I thought to make your life easier a bit uh, by summarizing uh, the whole thing and especially um, um, giving you the examples of the most commonly used um, sources and how to uh, reference them. So, so this is the video about uh, this thing. <clears throat> now let us move on. Um, first of all acknowledgements. Um, obviously I used um, these four types of sources um, and you can see that it's quite a lot to go through and I can understand when you're studying um, you don't have much time to go through but obviously you can go back to these uh, sources anytime you like for more details um, if you like to um, take them down you can stop the video and note them down so these are um, some of the sources that I have used to prepare this um, guidance now um, the most important thing is that um, what is the scope of this guidance or this um, short presentation. In this um, presentation we are going to look at um, these things. What is MHRA, key terms, quotations and quotation marks, ellipses, footnotes and bibliography. So these are some of the basic things. Um, at this point in your studies uh, I'm sure you know them very well uh, but this is just to um, refresh your memories and then this is the important bit where I will um, um, let you um, understand in a very simple and easy way how to reference different sources um, and I have picked only the most commonly used um, uh, sources here so for example books by one author and multiple authors and edited books chapters of edited books um, journal article newspaper website thesis and dissertations the Quran and the Bible plays visual materials YouTube and secondary referencing um, so this is what we are going to cover in this. Let us move on. <clears throat> so MHRA is actually, um, it stands for Modern Humanities Research Association style and it is used in most arts and humanities departments across the UK as I already uh, mentioned. Uh, the best thing or the most striking feature of MHRA is that it uses footnotes which is very very helpful. You don't have to go to the end of your thesis or dissertation or essay to find out who said what um, so you have everything um, at hand on the same page uh, but you have to um, check with your department with your university and their requirements how uh, do they want sometimes MHR obviously uses end notes as well uh, but most common is footnotes you have to check it with your university Okay, here are some key terms which are obviously, um, um, I mean, you come across them uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So citing, what is citing, which means that um, when you make a reference to a passage, text or author um, to provide support to your um, argument or simply quoting somebody uh, directly. Referencing is, um, uh, I mean, it's a, um, it's a way to ensure that whatever you have cited can be identified uh, precisely by providing full details. For example, if an examiner wants to go back and check the actual source, uh, you should have provided uh, enough information for that. Footnote, as I mentioned, is a small note or reference or additional piece of information at the bottom of the page. And it explains some sometimes and it leaves a note for the reader and it also gives the bibliographical details of the, the works that you cite. Bibliography is a full list of the reading you have done, 
in preparation for your work. It also includes those sources which you have not cited within your piece of work. So this is the difference between footnotes and and bibliography. Bibliography is the complete list of what you have read and footnotes is only citing those sources which you have actually used in your text. I'll talk about this later on but remember one thing for example if you have used um, if you have read 10 books for example and you have um, used seven of them in the body of your um, text um, essays or dissertations or thesis text so in footnotes you will include only those seven sources but in bibliography you will include 10 sources okay three of them you didn't use uh, inside the body of your text but still you read them but you cannot use any source that you have not read but that is relevant to your work and you have heard about it you cannot use that so and the last thing is plagiarism this is the action of stealing somebody somebody somebody's work or ideas and presenting it as your own it's a very very serious issue so be careful about that right so first of all um, let us talk about quotations and quotation marks and I will show you examples wherever there is a yellow highlighted um, text that is the example so first of all um, MHRA differentiates between short quotations and long quotations and quotations within quotations so let us have a look so quotes up to 40 words or fewer than two lines should be enclosed in single quotation mark and run on with the main text so as you can see that this bit is inside this sentence so this is how your uh, short quotations would run on or they should be embedded inside your sentences or the text and they should be enclosed uh, by single quotation marks just like that a quotation within a quotation must be enclosed uh, within double quotation marks so I have just made it a full quotation and uh, just consider that this is your uh, this is your quotation and in that quotation there is another quote and that should be in double uh, uh, speech marks or quotation marks now some of the systems do the other way they do double quotes for the full quote and quotation within quotation comes in uh, in single quotation marks um, but MHRA does this okay I hope that uh, makes it very very clear the next one is long quotations now quotes over 40 words or more than two lines long should be placed in a separate paragraph and indented okay you do not need to put a put quotation marks around indented uh, paragraphs I have taken this example uh, from MHRA guide uh, and you can see that this is the the main body of uh, the text your essay or your dissertation this is the long quote okay and you can see this is more than two lines long and more than 40 words so it should be indented this way okay no quotation marks but obviously at the end of the sentence you have to give a footnote um, uh, and this is uh, you can see this small uh, let me um, choose the, the pen you can see this small superscript and one it says one and that means um, the information about this quote is in the footnote number one because that is how you have to do it uh, when it is a long quote now the question about punctuation marks whether it should come inside the quotation mark or outside so punctuation marks for example full stops question marks or exclamation marks must be inside um, must be inside the quotation mark if the quote is a complete sentence and is separated from the preceding passage by a punctuation mark so this is the definition you can stop the video you can look at this again but here I'll explain it to you in a very nice and clean way he said to me comma my favorite playwright is Shakespeare now you could see that the full stop the final full stop is inside the quotation mark okay why because the preceding text this one he said to me is separated from this text by a comma okay and it makes a complete uh, 
sentence. So if this is the case, then you have to put the full stop or any punctuation mark inside the, um, the speech marks or quotation marks. Punctuation mark goes outside the quotation mark if the quote is embedded in your sentence. For example, um, he glosses pale as uh, fence, land, comma, park. Now here you could see that the full stop is outside the quotation mark. Why? Because it is not a complete sentence. It is just a part of your sentence. So this is your sentence. I mean, this is a very simple example. Your sentences could be very long. So this one is embedded in your sentence. Now, even um, if it is a short sentence, and this is just a juicy bit that you picked uh, from a, an author or from, from a source, and then you thought that it would be helpful for you to use this. So that is how you use it. Now, this full stop means that this full stop is the full stop for your sentence, not for this quote. I hope that makes it clear. We are going to talk about is ellipsis for omission. Uh, omission within prose quotations should be marked by an ellipsis of three points within square brackets. For example, he her inquiries uh, were not very favorably answered. Now, this could be a very long sentence or very long quote, but the words that you missed here are not relevant to your argument. So that's why you just need to delete them. You just need to pick the juicy bits or you just need to pick the relevant things. Now, if you have to do this, if you have to omit some words, you have to do this. Uh, square bracket um, stars, three dots, three full stops, and the bracket closes. So that tells the reader that some of the text has been omitted. But because you will have your um, footnote here and full detail of the source, the, the reader or the examiner can go back easily and check for himself or herself. So that was for the prose. Uh, now poetry. Omitted lines of verse should be marked by an ellipsis on a separate line. For example, you are trying to quote some poetry in your thesis or in your dissertation. But this line, which you haven't used inside your uh, text, is not relevant or you don't want that here. OK, so what you have to do is you have to put these ellipses uh, on a separate line. OK, now, for example, you don't need that as well. OK, so you have to put another here. Uh, so that shows that a, a line of this, um, the verse is missing or omitted. So that is how this is a small difference between um, prose and poetry. In prose, it runs inside the sentence. In poetry, it is on separate line. Now, the most important thing, no ellipses at the beginning or end of the quotation or quotations are taken um, as quotations are taken from a larger context unless the sense of the passage quoted is mainly incomplete. So so when, for example, for example, this one is a long quote and you have taken it from some source. There were three or four sentences before that. Obviously, it is a continuity of um, a text. So you don't need to put ellipses here. And you have seen in the source that after this full stop, there are three, four sentences. So you have taken it from a um, from in a I mean, it 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 is um, um, it was somewhere situated inside a text. So you don't need to put ellipses. Yes. But if you want to, for example, if you want to omit these words, then you have to put the square bracket and um, three dots for ellipses here. OK, I hope that makes um, sense. Footnotes, as I have already mentioned, that MHRA uses footnotes or endnotes to acknowledge citations. Um, so it is just about um, just a simple uh, explanation how to write footnotes. I mean, their structure, their style, we will talk about um, different sources and how to write footnotes later on as well. Footnotes are marked in your text by inserting a small superscript number at the end of a sentence. Now, in MHRA, uh, you have to uh, give footnote at the end of a sentence. 
but once again you have to check with your department uh, their conventions so superscript is um, something like that um, so obviously you don't have to put an X here so this is you can see this two it is raised above uh, the normal um, sentence so that is called superscript this is how it should be at the end of a sentence not uh, in the middle of a sentence for example uh, superscript number for example this is your quote and end of a sentence is also your quote so you don't put superscript here you put at the end of the sentence this is very important all footnotes uh, should end with full stops that's that's very important this is the difference between footnotes and bibliography there's no full stop in bibliography footnote must include full bibliographical details for each item cited for example now here you could see a book by Stanley Wells Shakespeare and Co uh, Christopher Marlowe and all these people uh, so this the, the name of the book starts uh, here and finishes here long book okay long name actually and then you have this we will talk about this in very um, detail later on so London place of publication penguin is the publisher 2007 comma p dot space 231 page number full stop that is how you have to give it uh, give a footnote first time now if you are citing the same item more than once you can use a shorter intelligible form of reference in your footnotes in the second or subsequent mentions for example you were writing something and you had to go from Stanley Wells so the first time you will give this style of uh, footnote or referencing the second time what you have to use the uh, you have to use author surname and intelligible title for example surname is Wells comes here comma and then Shakespeare and co you don't have to write the whole thing again even you don't have to write these details you just say Wells Shakespeare and co full stop um, comma and then the rest of it is the same as this one bibliography all written work should contain a bibliography detailing all your reading uh, for that piece uh, the bibliography must be placed at the end of your uh, piece of work okay so normally this does not uh, count towards the uh, the word count for example if you have to write a 30,000 um, word essay or dissertation bibliography will not count uh, in this word count uh, and footnotes as well I mean sometimes footnotes are counted but bibliography is not sources should be listed in alphabetical order by the surname of the author in the bibliography the first author's name should be inverted for example Charles Dickens becomes Dickens comma and Charles okay um, we will talk about um, books by uh, many authors or more than one authors but remember that if there are three authors only the first author's name is inverted the rest remain the same the second and the subsequent line of each entry is normally indented and you should not put a final full stop uh, this is just one example you could see that um, this is the name of the writer and inverted obviously the, the name was William Baldwin but you have to write Baldwin comma William comma treatise of moral philosophy containing the sayings of the wise that's the name of the book in italics London name of the publisher comma 1547 you could see no full stop now this is the bit that I wanted to explain the second line of the um, the book um, or the detail bibliographical detail should be indented this way this is how it should be and alphabetical order will um, consider these this surname okay right now let us jump into the actual thing referencing different sources examples of footnotes and bibliography for each type of source this is the first uh, slide in this connection and i would just explain it i will write the name of um, the source here and this is the kind of formula that is applied here and then you will have either one example of footnote and one example of bibliography unless there is a special case and um, like in this um, 
uh, you, we have two different examples and that is for a reason so this will happen uh, for the rest of slides um, um, different sources footnote example and bibliography uh, notes uh, sorry example right if a book is written by a single author then you have to write author name first title of the book in italics edition if it is not the first edition place of publication colon publisher comma date of publication and the bracket closes and then if you have to write page numbers then comma space page reference if applicable only for footnotes no page reference for bibliography unless it is an edited book or a chapter for example, this is the first example. You are citing Harold Bloom. Uh, so this is how you have to write in your footnote. The book is Shakespeare, the invention of the human. So that goes in italics, a space, then bracket, uh, round bracket, London, place of publication. And you have to put a colon here for state is the name of the publisher, comma, again, a space. And 1999 is the date of publication. Uh, bracket closes put a comma next to it then a space then page dot again a space and number page number and then it ends with full stop that's how you have to write it now sometimes an author has abbreviations in his or her name for example j dot f dot bernard um, so you have to write it this way in the footnotes Shakespearean melancholy philosophy. I mean the whole thing again Edinburgh Edinburgh University Press It's just like that what I wanted to explain in the footnote is that When you are writing bibliography You have to invert the first uh, author's um, Name because this is a single author. So Harold Bloom becomes Bloom Harold rest of the details remain same and no full stops at the end but look at this Bernard dot J dot F dot now here uh, let me highlight this thing um, as you can see here in the footnote F is um, followed by a dot okay here you could see a dot after F the dot will remain there and after that dot you will have put a comma you will have to put a comma here okay and the rest of the details remain the same but at the end no full stop no page numbers i'm sure you understand that <coughs> books by two or three authors <coughs> authors names separated by and not ands okay so you have to write these spellings not this title of the book in italics the rest of the details are same as in the previous slide if you don't understand you can stop that you can read this okay now this is important make sure that the surname of the first author precedes the phone name do not reverse the normal order for collaborating authors or editors other than the first yes so if there are two authors or three authors you have to just invert the first author's name in bibliography in footnote all of them remain as they are so, for example, Lawrence Perwin and Oliver P. John, personality name of the book, 7th edition. Okay, uh, I would like to um, explain this a bit. You see this edition, that is how you write. So, name of the book first, um, then a comma, then 7th edition, whatever it is. So, you write EDN for edition uh, and this 7th with TH. Or whatever it is even if it is um, if it is second so ND but it should not be a superscript it should not go up here it should not be like that uh, it's difficult to write with the mouse okay so this is called a superscript uh, flying above the normal height so it should stay on the line with seven okay so EDN and then there is no punctuation mark between addition and the bracket and there is a space okay that is very important so New York um, then the rest of the things are very simple okay inside the bracket place publisher uh, place col colon publisher comma and the year 
bracket closes now sometimes you have to give a range of pages so in that case you write pp not only not just p okay so it means these are the pages that you are referencing okay now look at this because these are two authors the second the first one is inverted so <clears throat> The first, um, uh, the third name precedes the, the first name or the fourth name, so Pavan Lawrence, and this remains the same. Both of them are exactly the same. And the rest of the story is the same, except for the last one, no page numbers, no punctuations at the end. Right, book by four, by four or more authors. For a book or any other source by four or more authors, you should list the first author only followed by and others so this is what you have to add first author name and others title of the book that's the formula addition and the details so for example Wentford Hex and others so that means that there are more than four authors or more than maybe five authors uh, okay uh, on the book obviously the whole detail would be available but here you can't write four or five names and make this a long story writing for journalists third edition and the rest of the details you know very well in the bibliography you just um, in invert the the name and and others remain the same rest of the details without a full stop next books by an author and an editor or a translator author's name title of the book in italics then comma then ed dot space by this is what you have to add editor's name or translator's name translated by now if it is let me choose the pen if it is edited by then you use this one if it is translated by somebody then you use trans dot space by in translator's name addition if not the first and these details remain the same so for example Walter Benjamin comma illuminations this is the name of the book comma edited by Hannah Arendt um, comma and this book is also translated by so we have an editor we have a translator as well by Harry Zorn uh, look at these words uh, sorry these names they remain the same here the only thing is that we inverted this name rest of the details remain the same as you see no full stops at the end okay next is uh, books by an author and a translator so um, let me choose um, author's name title of the books in italics translated by translator's name or names if there are two um, addition if not the first and the rest of the details you know that so for example in in the footnote the book is written by Michel de Montaigne as is written in French this is translated by John Florio and London printed by this guy in 1613 page number I mean these details remain the same for everything for every um, book whether it's written by one or third two or three or four how you invert this Montaigne Michel de uh, full stop comma name of the book rest of the details remain the same and no full stop at the end okay edited books now these are a bit different kind of animals footnote the title of the book in italics edited by editors names edition if not the first rest of the details you know and in bibliography you have to write editors name first and then eds if it is one then ed title of the book in italics edition if not the first right try to understand that if a book is edited no editor's name uh, comes first okay so the the name of the book comes first actual book so for example this one the Cambridge companion to Shakespeare studies so this is the name of the book you you see that this has been edited by Stanley Wells so it doesn't start here the, I mean Stanley Well doesn't come in front edited by Stanley Wells Cambridge Cambridge University Press 1986 um, in bibliography you just um, inverse the name and then you use a comma 
then you use editor ed uh, because it is one if there are two editors then you use eds comma then the name of the book and the rest of the details you know very well okay writing uh, citing chapter of an edited book um, so first of all author of the chapter then comma title of the chapter in single speech marks comma in you have to write in and then title of the book in italics uh, comma and then edited by editors names and the rest of the details are the same for example Sarah Hutton comma Platonism, Stoicism, Skepticism, and Classical Imitation. So this is the name of the chapter. Let me choose. This is the chapter that Sarah wrote in A Companion to English Renaissance Literature and Culture. So this is the book where this chapter is published or appears, edited by Michael Hottaway, uh, Oxford. So this guy is the editor. So he might have invited like 15, 16 people to write chapters. Sarah was one of them and you quoted Sarah. And then what you have to do is after these details, you put a comma and you give the uh, page range. Okay, so pages 44 to 57. Now this means that Sarah's chapter is from page 44 to 57. So this is the range of the chapter. And now in that uh, chapter, you cited something which is found on page number 55. For the reader or the examiner, now it is very easy to understand that he or she needs to get this book. He has to go to these or she has to go to these pages. Okay, he knows that um, this chapter is in, from this book, this page number to this page number and on page number 55, you cited something this is how easy it is to locate this is why footnotes are so very important in bibliography you just need to um, I mean invert the name and this is the only uh, thing which has page numbers in bibliography so chapter of an edited book should be um, referenced uh, with page numbers in bibliography as well. Journal articles. <clears throat> so first of all, author's name, title of the article, title of the journal in italics, volume number, dot, issue number, no punctuation mark, but space, year of publication in round brackets, page range of article, uh, and page reference if applicable. So let us do this one leads barrel this is the name of the author comma then single quotation marks a new history for Shakespeare in his time that's the name of the article comma and then uh, sorry a speech marks speech mark closes and then comma outside it okay because it is part of this whole thing Shakespeare quarterly name of uh, the journal it should be in italics 39.4 so 39 is volume number 4 is the issue number no punctuation mark between 4 and the round bracket and a space 1988 bracket closes a comma and then page range okay um, for the article 441 to 464 and then you reference cited something from page 445 so it should be once again in round brackets so you put a p dot a space 445 and then it closes and then full stop goes at the end that is how you have to cite a journal article in bibliography um, this thing is missing which is no page numbers but the page range remains there in this way without any p's so but this name is also inverted that is how you cite an article newspapers so you have to write author's names first title of the article in single quotation marks title of the newspaper in italics day and month and year page range of the article and page reference if applicable only in footnotes for example you are writing citing norma um, clark so it should be like that 
personally speaking, how on 18th century, uh, 18th century curate's wife invented the celebrity memoir. Okay, so this is the name of the article in single quotation marks, Sunday Telegraph, name of the newspaper in italics, comma, 17th of February, 2008, no uh, TH or ND or ST, nothing, uh, comma, P dot space six dot, that's it. Okay, now the interesting thing is that it remains almost the same except for the name. Uh, the name is inverted, the rest of the details remain exactly the same. Uh, okay. Websites. Author's name. First, title of the web page in italics, year that the site was published or last updated, then URL in these um, things, inside these things, access day, month, and year. Uh, it is best understood here. For example, you are quoting from UK Parliament's website. So the author's name could be the name of the department and it could be the name of the person who has written that. So for example, this information about Robert Catsby was uh, found on UK Parliament website. So the UK Parliament would be the author. Uh, Robert Catsby is the name of this um, uh, website or title of this web page, comma, and then you put uh, 2020. This is the date when it was last updated. Now on websites, at the bottom of the website, normally it is uh, this date is written. Sometime it is uh, written this way, last updated 2020. Sometime last updated is missing, just 2020. So that would be the date. Then the URL in in these uh, things, uh, this type of um, punctuations, accessed 5 October 2022. So you have to write like that, accessed, not on, without on, access 5 October. And um, there is another example where the actual author is mentioned. So Amanda Mabillard, um, Shakespeare and the Gunpowder Plot. Once again, the same thing. Um, oh, there is a there's a comma missing here, so you have to put that. I missed it. I'm sorry for that. And then the website, and then access 8th of February 2018. Full stop. Full stop. Uh, <clears throat> bibliography is um, exactly the same if it is UK Parliament. But if it is the name of a person, it is inverted. Uh, once again, I made a small mistake here. Um, there is no full stop here. Okay, so this full stop shouldn't be here. Uh, right. Is thesis and dissertations. Um, first of all, author's name, title of the dissertation of thesis, unpublished type of dissertation. Type of dissertation means whether it's an MA dissertation or PhD, university, year of publication. So you have to give it like that. Footnote. Matthew Birchwood, comma, and speech marks, dramatic representation of Islam and in, in England in 1640 and 1685. And then in round brackets, you write unpublished doctoral thesis, Royal Holloway, University of London, 2001, comma, page dot 68 dot. Okay, that is how you have to do it for thesis and dissertation. In bibliography, you just need to invert this name. And no full stop. Okay, a note here. If you have accessed the thesis or dissertation on Ethos or any other platform online, you just need to add the URL as we did in websites. Okay, so after this, you add the URL and date accessed if it is online. The Quran and the Bible. Now, these are the holy books. And for these holy books, you have to reference in a special way. Uh, so first of all, name of the chapter um, or book, if it is Bible, no punctuation mark between the name and the number of the uh, chapter or book, then full stop, verse number or range. Chapters or the, of the Quran and books of the Bible are not italicized. Roman numerals are used for the numbers of the books and Arabic numerals are used to separate um, chapters and verses. So for example, if you have to give the reference from the Quran, now the spellings in MHRA are K-O-R-E-N, 
but you can also write q u r a n but you have to be very consistent okay so for example this is the name of the chapter the women and then space four so the women is chapter number four dot and 15 verse dot the next example is the prophets name of the chapter 21 this chapter is 21 and then you can also give a range of verses if you have to reference from bible so you you write something like that isaiah uh, 22 dot 17 chapter number uh, this is the name of this is the number of the book and this is the number of the uh, the verse uh, two so this is roman okay so roman numerals are used uh, for the numbers of the book so this is um, corinthians 2 uh, chapter 5 Th these are the verses okay now very important uh, note here give a complete bibliograph bibliographical detail with a note like this upon your first reference from the holy books for example you could say all citations are from the bible the holy bible london robert barker 1611 unless otherwise stated so that means that you use this version to give references all the time from the bible next plays and long works of literature <clears throat> name of the play in italic small capital roman numerals should be used for the numbers of acts and plays and for the number of books and other major subdivisions smaller subdivisions for example scene cantos chapters etc and line numbers are usually indicated by arabic numerals it's very easy to understand it from here than from this story this is the name of the play the merchant of venice comma uh, this is two which is act and it's in roman numeral and it is smaller than three so for example three is 16 point um, this should be 14 or 15 point uh, small capitals so act 2 scene 3 dot and line number 10 space between them if you have to um, uh, give reference from merchant um, from the merchant of Venice again you can simply write merchant and in bracket 2 3 10 and 11 line numbers the fairy queen um, name of the book uh, number of the book sorry um, so book 3 um, scene 2 uh, scene 8 and line number 26 paradise lost book 9 these are the lines and any it's and this is how it is okay once again when you are referencing from uh, l complete works or long works of literature you could write something like that upon your first footnote for example all citations are from William Shakespeare the new Oxford Shakespeare the complete works edited by these guys unless otherwise stated so that makes the reader um, understand which um, edition you used visual sources for example film cds and dvds <clears throat> title in italics director uh, and then director's name and name of the distribution company year of a, um, distribution material for example on dvd or cd for example you have to give reference of this um, film the grapes of wrath comma directed dot dir dot by directed by john ford 20th century fox um comma and then uh, 1940 and full stop at the end now this is this shows that you watch that movie on the cinema uh now the grapes of wrath again the same details but you watched on dvd or you watched on cd so if it is dvd you write on dvd if it is cd then you write on cd this is what you have to add at the end and this is exactly the same in bibliography without full stops youtube <clears throat> if you have to give reference from the youtube then you could say the author the title in italics the type of source the title of the website the date of publication url and the date of the access for example <clears throat> for type, the author could be the name of the company or whosoever has uploaded this or sometime it is the name of the channel for example cosmo learning comma howard english e129 lecture 2 toilets and cressida online video recording you have to say that comma then youtube in this way com, comma 
26 September 2007 comma and then you give URL and accessed 14 December 2018 in square brackets full stop at the end you do the exact same thing in bibliography without a full stop if the author is a human being for example uh, Matthew Birchwood then you just inverse the name rest of the things are the same now <clears throat> This is our last slide. It's becoming a very long course now. Um, you may want to quote a piece of work that has been referred to in a book that you have read. Try to read the original work, but if you are unable to do so, your text must make it clear that you have not read that original piece, but are referring to it from a secondary source. For example, um, this is one reference, but I have given it two colors, so uh, I just need to make it um, um, easier for you to understand. For example, Stephen Greenblatt, Will in the World, How Shakespeare Became Shakespeare. So this is the detail cited in Richard Wilson, Secret Shakespeare, Manchester and New York, Manchester University Press, page number 14. Now, this means that you have not read Stephen Greenblatt. You read Richard Wilson's Secret Shakespeare and Richard uh, quoted uh, Greenblatt on page number 14. Okay, but whatever Richard quoted from Greenblatt on page number 14 in actual Stephen Greenblatt's book, it is on page 103. Okay, so this is how you have to write. So you write the name of the origin, um, original book first from which the idea came from. And then you say cited in and this is the book that you read okay so in your bibliography at the end of your work you should only include the reference of the work you have read so because you read Richard Wilson so you will only um, include that in your bibliography you will not include Stephen Greenblatt's book why because you didn't read it if you read it your footnote will change and then Stephen Greenblatt's book will come in uh, with page number one or three full stop done okay so i'm sure uh, you understand that all right so that is the end of um, this um, short presentation i wouldn't say it's short i thought it would be short but it's i mean it it took me some time uh, anyhow i wish you all the best and thanks for watching bye